ओके गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन यस इट इज मॉर्निंग इन यूके या सो इज एवरीवन हियर शाल वी स्टार्ट कैन यू गाइस हियर मी ओके ओके परफेक्ट सो राइट सो लेट अस स्टार्ट बिकॉज इट्स 10 ऑलरेडी okay so um do you guys have an idea about how oskis are uh, usually what oski is and how it is done and stuff like that do you have a basic idea okay so can you tell me what's the full form of oski not really okay that's not a problem we would because in intro class what we are going to do is we are basically going to walk you through how the exam happens okay and what we are expecting okay because i think all of you have not given the exam before so obviously you have no idea don't have much idea so um a bit right that's all right that's all right so i am going to tell you how it happens and what oskis are exactly that's correct madhi ha huh? so oski is basically objective structured clinical examination okay so as you probably know that there are around 10 stations okay so every station has a different theme so uh, as you can see here in the slides also there are 10 stations and you have two rest stations so the overall exam would happen for about 2 uh, hours okay so as you go inside there would be uh, a hall kind of a place and there will be like different rooms okay so and in every room there is an actor patient who is sitting there and there is an examiner so examiner would not be talking to you would not be interacting with you and uh, would not have anything to do basically all they would do is they are silent watchers they would just be marking you based on various things okay how you were speaking because here the most important thing is uh the most important thing is how you communicate with the patient okay because they have already tested your knowledge in your part 1 so in here apart from knowledge obviously you would need that knowledge to use it here but the most important thing is communication how you communicate okay uh hello hello dr sudha yeah yeah i saw it <laughs> okay all right so you have around 10 stations as i told you so each station is something like this okay 2 plus 8 so 2 minutes you'll be having for reading the scenario so as i told you there will be 10 rooms as you go inside you would be there would be a placard kind of a thing which will be stuck on the rooms so i suppose all of you are giving a face to face exam am i correct so i think most of you are from the uk so you guys are giving a face to face exam correct okay that's that's perfect i would say this because uh, in the online exam many people have faced a lot of problems difficulties with different things okay uh, yes dr hanani so you are giving um, an exam in malaysia so that is also face to face i suppose right yes so perfect so all of you are giving face to face exam so let me tell you that's the best thing okay so now let me tell you how the exam happens as i was telling you that there will be these rooms and you'll be having a placard which will be stuck to the uh, door so you would just be standing in front of the door you'll be reading the scenario you'll be having 2 minutes so make sure that you do not take the whole 2 minutes for reading the scenario because the scenarios trust me guys are not big okay the scenarios are not very long because i have heard that in england the scenarios are very long people had difficulties in reading them completely and finishing the whole thing so i can understand that but yes but it's not like that in edinburgh the exam the scenarios are not really very long the scenarios are something like you can finish reading them in one one minute or one minute 15 seconds and then you think about what you are going to speak inside you'll be given a blank paper with a board okay so if you want you can jot down a few things if you really want um, like for example the patient's name because that is something that you would not want to make mistake so as you go inside the patient's name is mr james and you feel that you may while because you are anxious right in the exam in the first few oskis at least you are a bit anxious so there is a possibility that you might feel that as you go inside that you would 
forget the patient's name and that should never happen okay so you can just jot down the points yeah uh no no dr sudha there was nothing actually i just now only we are talking nothing much yeah so um uh, all we were saying is that there are 10 stations and you'll be having a placard which will be stuck to the rooms and you'll be having 2 plus 8 minutes so 2 minutes for reading the scenarios and 8 minutes for talking to the patient okay so uh, that is all we have said till now not much actually yes so you know you are not allowed to bring papers or notes you will be given papers okay you will be given a few papers blank sheets where you can write down a few things i would suggest so guys see the thing is that you are already anxious and i would not tell you that you know write down a lot of things because when you go inside you know it becomes very weird if you are looking at the paper and talking to the patient so focus on the patient make eye contact because this exam is mostly about communication building a rapport with the patient okay so you would not want to waste your time looking down you know that is that does not give a very good impression why am i telling you to write down jot down a few points is just just the points maybe it could be one or two points also okay like patient's name and the, if there is a specific thing because see in the oskis there will be multiple complaints it's never going to be a patient is coming with pericoronitis it's never going to be like that there would always be something or the other you know you know like how because it is like how patients come to your clinic the patients sometimes come to you for, with a single complaint but most of the times uh there are multiple complaints so just make sure that you do not waste a lot of time writing down think about the points in your head also even that helps okay and do not treat the actor patients like actor patients think of them as your own patients so as i have always told people that you know there are different ways different ways to deal with a scenario do not think what examiner is thinking at that point okay because you know that there are multiple things that you i mean multiple ways how you can deal with a certain scenario it doesn't have to be like what the examiner is thinking there is a single thing no there is not a single thing you can um there are multiple ways how you can deal with one scenario so you don't have to think about what examiner is thinking think of the patient as your own patient and think of it like you are trying to help the patient so how you would want to help the patient right okay now see that there are these 10 stations right as i told you so the first station is history taking so as you go inside in those placards the themes will be written guys okay the themes will be written so you read the theme properly in a history taking theme you would focus on the history okay and less on the management i am not saying no, not you would not be giving a treatment planning for that but you know the maximum marks you'll be getting for taking up good history so just read the theme well you'll be having approximately two stations for history taking then next is your explanations this is the most important because you'll be having around four stations for that where you'll be giving the patient a diagnosis prognosis treatment options and procedures okay and the third one is interpretation of investigations or special tests this will be one station so in this what do they ask usually there will be um an opg mostly there will always be an opg okay an opg or you know like um maybe an occlusal radiograph some iops stuff like that okay nothing really very difficult okay next is managing patient concerns or queries so there will be around three stations for this uh there could be something where you have to gain consent okay consent for example um patient has to undergo an extraction for a pericoronitis okay so you are the one who will be taking consent because here you may not be the treating surgeon okay because in the uk you do not uh, do a third molar extraction yourself yes but if you are like properly trained and you are really confident you can do it but usually gdps end up uh, referring them to the oral surgeons okay so taking consent second is handling complaints what kind of complaints for example uh, you are the dentist you are the gdp you have while doing an endo procedure while doing an rct you have uh, broken an instrument inside one of the canals okay so the patient is now complaining something like that okay we will be discussing all these things in the next classes this is just an intro so i'm just going over these things quickly okay third is managing anxiety motivating breaking bad news okay these are uh, the theme is managing patient concerns so yes the stations do carry equal weight and uh, 
so it is said that you have to pass in all the stations okay but when we had asked the lead examiner whether how they how we are marked basically how the students are candidates are marked so is it like we have to pass in all the stations or there is a like uh, the marks are like you know taken from all the rooms separately and then they are combined and then you give you give them a pass or fail so they are they themselves are not very clear about it so they say that it's very complicated but it is very fair so i don't think the examiners are sitting there to fail you the examiners are there to pass you basically all the all you have to make sure is that you do not make any gross mistakes okay right uh so i suppose all of you are giving mfds edinburgh correct no one who's giving england right edinburgh perfect i think yeah i think everybody is giving edinburgh fine so this is how it is okay so you see there is an actor patient okay and there is an examiner this is the examiner so you may or may not greet the examiner the examiner may not really respond to you okay uh, courtesy for courtesy you can okay uh, but do not feel bad if the examiner is not looking at you or the examiner is not responding responding or something like that because that's not their job they are not supposed to be talking to you or anything like that all they would do is look at you look at your demeanor look at how you are talking to the patient look at your communication skills so as i have told you that it is really important to build a rapport with the actor patient okay second thing which is very important is time management it's very very important so uh, in the last exam what happened in edinburgh was like the candidates were sitting like this uh, in most of the rooms the clock was behind them okay so in front of you the actor was sitting this is you where i am sitting and behind me the uh, timer is was there so you know you really and in some rooms the timer was on the side so you could see it okay but i would not really rely on that okay maybe they are just trying to make sure that the actor patients can see the timer not you and as 8 minutes are over you would be asked to go so all you can do is if the if your time is over they would maximum let you finish your sentence or maybe one or two lines saying thank you so much that is it you you are not you will not be allowed to talk any more than that so time management is very very important so whenever you are practicing at home make sure your timer is on in front of you the timer is on because later on what will happen is you will get used to it you'll get used to that 8 minutes time and you will make sure that you are finishing in that time and if you finish before time you can sit inside the room because you would probably not be allowed to go outside so it is a bit uh, it is a bit awkward to sit with the examiner and the actor patient and not talking that can happen that's completely all right but just make sure that you are taking up 7 and a half minutes or 7 minute 45 seconds not like you are finishing within 6 minutes or 7 minutes that will be too much okay that will be too less which would mean that you have probably not spoken about the important things because trust me guys you will go over time always you would never be you know short of time right communication as i have told you the most important thing speech it should not be like a speech okay it should always be like an interaction it should not be like you are going on talking you not listen to the patient you not letting him or her talk it should not be like that always make sure you listen to the actor patient because the actor patient will give you many information which you would otherwise miss okay interaction very important imparting information yes that is important but what you have to make sure is you do not use any jargon because when we are talking in our clinical scenarios when we talking to our fellow dentists or stuff like that we end up talking in a different way you know you say stuff like peripacolapsis pulpitis pericoronitis make sure you do not use any such words because those are called as jargons the patient is a layman and think of them as i mean having less education or anything like that but they would not be understanding these things okay so make sure you do not use any jargon the patient would waste your time there asking about doctor what did you say what is pericoronitis so even if you are saying i feel that it is pericoronitis okay even if you feel that you know it is pericoronitis but don't worry about the fancy term i am going to tell you what it means okay that is how you go about you have to give the diagnosis because the correct diagnosis would be probably pericoronitis or periapical abscess or apical periodontitis or anything okay but just make sure that after you have used that term you talk to the patient say sorry and you tell them that this is what it means okay explain to them right okay um right so yes 
speed is important so you would realize that you cannot really go very slow then you would not be able to finish all the complaints you would not be able to finish them okay so speed is important you cannot go very slow and make sure you do not go very fast because if you go very fast patients may not understand because here in the uk people speak very slowly very slowly you don't have to speak that slowly because then you would definitely not finish the important points but yes speed is important not too slow not too fast organization and structure so this will come with practicing guys so as i as i always tell that you know practicing is very important so it's very important that you keep practicing because as you practice there are some oskis which are going to be repeated so you would realize that those are the oskis where you can really get good marks because those are your common oskis right okay again same thing no jargon give the basic information avoiding unnecessary information do not give unnecessary information we know you know a lot okay but you know 8 minutes are really not enough so in your clinic is anyone telling you that you know you have to finish talking to the patient in 8 minutes or 9 minutes really not so in the in your clinic you can talk more but here in the exam you have to only give the important information avoiding any unnecessary topics time management stooping to layman level this is very important because you would think that you know giving a lot of uh, information and talking about a lot of you know uh, terminologies would fetch you marks it's the opposite here okay they do not want you to use a lot of jargon all they want you to do is to make the patient understand the diagnosis and what exactly you're going to do about it that is your job okay always if you have an x ray point to the x ray showing them the things that you are trying to talk and always try to draw because when you are drawing you are making them understand a lot of things okay always try to draw right assessing the tone of the actor patient so try to understand because there are some oskis where the actor patient might be um really angry so try to understand what they are feeling at that point and try to tend to their need okay instead of trying to build your own point try to understand what they are feeling at that point okay overall history clinical management referrals whenever required taking care of the patient's pain or anxiety so in some cases where um, we would be seeing one sample oski today so you would understand what i'm trying to say about taking care of pain or anxiety so if the patient has come to you with pain always make sure that in because you have other complaints as well you do not forget about the basic thing that they have come to you with if they have come to you with pain make sure that you are treating the pain okay because that is the patient's most important uh, complaint right okay do we have oski that closely match edinburgh scenarios and practice them yes that is what we are going to do yeah will the time be sufficient for all that won't it feel rushed uh did not get your question hanani uh, you mean uh, the points whether the points will be too much to discuss in that short period yes dr sudha it actually um i would say that in the last exam i think around 80 to 85 5% questions were from the book actually i know you guys i mean people had a a uh, different experience with england exam but with edinburgh it was really um very clear very clean exam very fair exam i would say and you don't you really don't have to worry and after you finish all those 100 oskis and you have prepared them even if you're getting a little bit different oski it is not something that you have not heard about there was trust me there was no oski that was like really something that you have never heard or thought about it was everything that you can do being a gdp yeah right yes everything that's correct now how to start probably some of you already know you know you have your notes with you start with the notes okay uh, attend live classes every day because in here you'll be practicing with me so because i have a first hand experience so i know how they do things how they ask things what they expect so when you're practicing with me that is the most important part of your live classes okay if you miss for some reason do catch up on the recorded classes i don't think that there'll be any difference any difficulty with that notes uh, have you all got your notes you've got it right 
and uh, yeah mock exam in the end practice is the key guys keep practicing so uh, people ask me like how many oskis uh, are we supposed to practice every day so i would say that if you are starting okay so with you know in the beginning days you can start with approximately 5 to 6 oskis but yes if you are uh, doing one oski okay make sure that you are really good at that for example if you are starting with um high spots okay so make sure that you have practiced it at least two to three times or three to four times to to that extent that you are good at it okay in the beginning days probably you'll be looking at the oskis the notes and you'll be talking that's completely all right but as the days progress make sure that you do not look at the notes anymore okay you know the points in your head okay right notes no i'm talking about the hard copies the hard copies that you've not received the planuary hard copies yeah yeah you will be getting it very soon i i suppose okay don't worry yes and uh, yes soft copies are also here uh, many soft copies are there and if you need anything you can just put it in the group and yes one most important thing that i would want to tell you there is a book called as odell probably you all are aware of it okay it is one of my favorite books okay it's Uh, apart from the usual books like pink and master dentistry um i would suggest you start reading odell and odell should not be read in the end because odell is not going to help you talk odell will be giving you a perspective okay there are some very complicated cases in odell there are some very simple cases there are some complicated cases don't worry very complicated cases will not be coming in your exams okay but what why i'm asking you to read odell is because uh see now this book is not required this book is not required okay so you'll be wasting time if you're reading these books because it's really not required odell on the other hand yes because it will give you a perspective of how things happen so if you get a case like this so how you'll be going ahead with it so yes odell is very very important no we're not going to discuss odell it's not required like that okay i'm asking you to read it because so that it gives you a perspective okay we are going to discuss the oskis only and we'll be practicing the oskis here but i'm asking you to read it for example three to four chapters that's how we told the previous batch also that you know read three to four chapters per day from odell if you have you will not be having any difficulties it's a very simple book okay why i'm asking you to read this is because you get a step by step approach which is very important for the exam it is not going to help you in talking and all that for that we are there okay but yes do read the book it's very important all right now um let's look so this is one sample question that will be seen just for the uh, just for the sake of understanding how it happens do you have any doubts so far so this is your uh, actor oski book which you will be receiving very soon so these are the topics that we will be discussing uh from this we'll be discussing 84 important topics okay and this is your schedule planner probably you've got the schedule planner right so your classes are starting on 4th 4th is we are doing it on saturdays and sundays so that all of us are free okay right and uh, is there any doubt that you have so far so dr sudha i would suggest that you start reading odell and you read all the chapters only in the end there are a few topics uh for example implant and stuff like that in which they are talking it's it's like more of technical stuff so those are not required because it's really not going to help you in this exam for your knowledge you can definitely read the whole book but in the end there are a few unnecessary topics and there are some topics on medical emergency which you're not going to require i did read the whole book i like the book actually but if you want to skip it you can skip it okay right all right um mm, so let us look at one sample question so as i told you that there are four themes right so today we are going to just see the first theme that is history taking which is a very simple theme actually it's a very simple one so in history taking theme what you do is for example you'll be given these information this is exactly guys this this thing is this is exactly how you will be having a scenario so as you can see this is all this is all that you have so very very small scenario this is it this much is the scenario you have got the name the age of the patient gender 
occupation information is that this is a new patient who has come to your general dental practice today he has a broken painful lower right first molar tooth okay broken painful lower first molar tooth and he has already told you that he wants it to be removed what is your job at the station take a complete history from the patient explain to the patient any implications of his history on his oral health and any proposed dental treatment now you cannot examine the patient obviously this is an actorowski so you are not supposed to examine any patient right so this is your scenario so you have a few information here so how do you want to go about so if this is the information that you have been given okay so there is a broken painful lower right first molar and the patient wants to get it removed so why is it a history taking theme and what history what is the important part of the history that would change your treatment options correct very true so uh, before going into medical history so obviously when you go inside you are you have been asked to take a history so you would always start with pain history correct yeah pain history so what all will you be asking in pain history that's correct yes so let us go step by step now so pain history what all will you be asking yes exactly so go one by one so now there are some information which you have already got so never because this in this scenario we don't have much information because it's a history taking theme but if they have already given you it's a lower right first molar again you don't have to ask where okay so ask about onset when it started okay aggravating factor relieving factors intensity all right have they got any treatment done on that tooth before so always ask relevant questions the questions that you are asking should not be irrelevant or the questions that you are asking it has to be like that it will help you in the treatment planning okay and never repeat the questions that are already given in your scenario because you are wasting your time because you see in this also there are a lot of things that you have, that you would have to ask to the patient and after asking the complete history what you would have to do is you would have to tend to the problem okay so now coming to the medical history which is very very important so in this why this is a question by the way from the last year also the same question had come in the last year edinburgh exam as well okay so here the positive history that the patient gave when you are asking about medical history do you have any problems do you take i taking any medications so the patient told that they are having some heart conditions for that they are taking some medication the patient did not know the name of the medication so at that point when they are saying that they do not know the name of the medication what are you supposed to ask okay so you are supposed to ask are you carrying the medications or are you carrying a paper in which your names of the medications are given and yes they did have it okay they had a small paper in which the names of the medications were given and in those one of the most important medication that they were taking was warfarin okay now if the patient is taking warfarin and the patient wants to get the tooth removed on the same day can you do it so what are the if the patient is already taking warfarin what are the questions that you would want to ask the patient after you get to know that the patient is taking warfarin what are the questions that you would want to ask exactly when was the last inr done now for inr what do you say you would not ask be asking inr if the patient see the patients are taking warfarin they would mostly know what is an inr okay even then you would not be saying when was the last inr done you would be asking when was the last prick test done okay right so you would want the inr to be done in the last 72 hours or 24 hours okay so 
not more than 72 hours. All right. So and the second question that you'll be asking is if the patient is carrying a yellow, uh, yellow book. Why do you need to see the yellow book? Why do you need the yellow book to be seen? What does, an, what does a yellow book refer to? To understand whether the values fluctuate. Okay. So you'll be having to get information, more information about how the values have been over the past few months or years. Okay. And if the patient is telling that the patient is not carrying a yellow book, then you can ask. So does the value, no, uh, do, your, do the values fluctuate? OK, so they would be saying, no, doctor, they are mostly stable, which is a good thing. OK, now, after you have asked about prick test done, after you have asked about the yellow book, what else would you want to ask the patient? So when you have asked about the medical problem, if they are having any bleeding disorder, they would probably tell you. Yes, yes. So it is very important that you get to know about the patients, whether the patient is having any bleeding or clotting disorder. So what will you be asking the patient? You can ask if they have got a previous dental treatment or any extraction done. Do not say extraction always. OK, say removal. OK, tooth removal. So when did they have it last? And when they got it done, was there any problem? Did they have excessive bleeding at that time? Or you can also ask, like, whenever you get a cut on your skin do you feel that it bleeds longer than usual okay these kind of questions yes correct that's correct okay now after you are done with the medical history you have asked about the warfarin thing now what is your job to do now the patient wants it today you cannot do it today right so the patient is going to be a little bit unhappy patient has come to you with what the patient has come to you mostly with pain right so what will you do how will you relieve the pain do not forget because see this is a long oski because you're taking a lot of history here but do not forget about the pain because you know you would think that okay we know that it's a painful tooth why would we forget about the pain but trust me guys it happens okay because you're so anxious in the exam you are in a different you know in a scenario and in a different environment it happens that you would forget about the most basic thing that is the pain so for the pain what you can do what you can say is first he wants the tooth removed today so tell the patient why you cannot remove it okay tell them that you would be referring them to the general practitioner where they will be uh they they would get a prick test done and once we get the result of the prick test you will schedule an appointment for him after you have told this patient might be wasting a little bit of your time saying doctor but i really want to get it removed so you have to make them understand why you cannot do it how if you do it, how they can bleed a lot and how it can be really um, distressing for the patient. All right. So make sure that they understand why you cannot remove the tooth. After that, after you have done all these things, then you talk about the pain. Tell, ask them because you have already asked them whether they're taking any painkillers or anything like that. So most of the patients would have taken painkiller, would not be. I mean, the patient would say that I have taken a painkiller, but, you know, it is not really helpful. So now you know that there is a problem There is now you would probably have an X-ray, but mostly you would not have an X-ray here. So you just say that, you know, you'll be removing the, cavity, the, the infection. Do not say caries. You can say decay is fine. Decay is not a jargon, but cavity, decay, these things are fine. Do not say caries. Say that you'll be removing the information. And after that, you'll be placing a temporary dressing. And then you'll be prescribing some painkillers. All right. So this is depends on the history. Yes. So depends on the history. It will depend on what kind of a problem the patient is having, whether the patient is having peripical abscess. So in that your treatment plan will change. Not much. Actually, only thing that will change is you'll be removing it. You'll be trying to extirpate the pulp, remove the infection. And then once the pus is relieved and then you'll be giving some temporary dressing that will take care of the pain for time being. And then they would, when they come back after the INR test, you'd be checking whether the INR is within normal limits, which is between two to four. If it is, so tell that also the patient that, you know, I'll be checking if the INR is between the normal level, in the normal level. If it is not, then I would 
unfortunately i will have to refer you to your general practitioner or to your specialist again so that they can do some investigation and try to understand what exactly is happening and if they can substitute any of your medication so it is not up to you to stop warfarin start on heparin that is not your job that is what the cardiologist will do if there is a problem if the inr is not within normal limit if it is more then the cardiologist will do certain things okay and then when again they'll be doing an inr test and when that is normal then they will be referred back to you so all these things the patient has to understand so you can understand that it's a very long oski so you really cannot ask questions which are irrelevant the questions read the scenario properly there is some information that are given in the scenario do not repeat those, those questions because then definitely you would not reach the treatment aspect now how do they mark you they would basically try to understand we should tell this referral on the same appointment yes so you would have to refer this patient if they are telling that they are taking warfarin you would be referring them to the general practitioner the general practitioner will carry on with the inr if they feel if the general practitioner see that you know it is not uh, within normal limits they basically see it is between 2 to 4 right but yes there are different scenarios there are different cardiac problems because of which the scenarios it's basically for some it is below 3 for some it is below 4 stuff like that so general practitioner may refer them back to you or they may send them to the cardiologist as well but mostly the general practitioner will be referring the patients back to you because it is up to you to decide what you are going to do and then if you see that it is not normal then you can refer them so all that you don't have to say all you would have to say in the in this scenario is that i will be referring you to the general practitioner they will be doing a prick test for you if it is within normal i will be carrying out with the treatment if it is not normal then i will be referring you to a specialist this is all you have to say okay right so here you are either competent or non competent non competent means that you have not done some things well so how would they understand whether they are you are competent or not identify as medical condition associated with anticoagulation you have asked about relevant medical history including drug history elicit the list of medication from the patient this is where you will be asking can i have the list of the medications that you are taking if you do not ask the list guys they are not going to give you okay it's up to you to ask identifies warfarin as the issue of dental extraction <coughs> inquires about inr level non competent is you do not identify extraction as posing post extraction hemorrhage risk do not take adequate medical history including medications and allergies so as i always tell that be it whichever case obviously not in a case where it is a complaint or something like that not in those kind of cases apart from the, those uh, different cases in all the cases do ask about medical history and allergy history okay because in the uk here everybody is taking some or the other medication uh, 60% to 70% people also have allergy okay so do ask these two histories do we have to ask about all medical conditions no 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 because then you would not have time that is not what they are asking here you would only be asking about do you have any medical problems let them answer but now that you are this is a an extraction case and you have to understand that they have not given you a simple extraction case there has to be some or the other medical problem so you can poke a little bit about the drug history drug history you take separately but you wouldn't have to say do you have allergy do you have asthma do you have uh, no gi problems no not like that just ask a basic question they would give you the positive answer they would not be like that that no I, the, let the doctor ask and i would not be giving no not like that drug history you will be asking separately and yes a breathing problem i wanted to ask separately because even if the patient is seeing sometimes the patient may not know about this so and breathing and clotting disorder is something which would be uh, changing your treatment course hence it is important to ask okay again what is now based on dentist or patient interaction identifies patient's desire so as i see in the in the scenario it is clearly given that the patient wants to remove the tooth today so you have to at least acknowledge that you cannot be like no i cannot do it today okay try to understand why he is really distressed he is in pain he wants to get the tooth removed okay it might be an old patient so you have to understand the patient wants something you have to acknowledge it and always guys i cannot uh, um stress on this enough be empathetic throughout okay 
make sure that your body language and so you know edinburgh people what they told in the last exam they are not really very happy about conducting exams online because in online there are many things that they really cannot understand first first thing is body language they really cannot understand that okay there are many things that they can really judge well when it is an it is a face to face exam online exams are really bad they they really bad there are many things that are missed in the online exam there are some technical issues so yes face to face exam is something that edinburgh people really like and they they never would want to take an online exam but yes during covid they might have to or something like that but it is something that they always try to avoid yes yes exactly that's what i'm saying in england people i know you guys have faced this in england uh, that you know in online exams you cannot first of all you cannot draw when you cannot draw there are certain things that you really cannot make the patient understand when you're talking about this is a tooth you're drawing the tooth and you're showing different layers and you're showing how the infection has reached the inner layer that is called as pulp and you know stuff like that it it really you feel that you know you can give the exam at the comfort of your home it is not really like that when you are there present face to face the kind of feel that you will be having it is really good because i know people who have given england exam they have had a very different experience but i will tell you this uh, in edinburgh the exam the experience was so good that i probably would not be able to tell you how good it was and there they are not trying to fail you and you would understand that by the demeanor okay they are not trying to fail you all they are trying to see is whether you are competent if the patient comes to your it's very clinical so if the patient comes to you whether you can handle it or not yeah imagine if if, if you are saying something they cannot understand they are asking you to repeat which can happen right but in edinburgh that is not going to happen yes yes so it is it is very easy if you are giving an online if you are giving a face to face exam there are a lot of things that they can judge they can understand and hence the passing rate is also better okay right so you have to be courteous you have to be empathetic throughout be it whatever the patient is screaming at you patient is yelling patient is doing whatever you have to be uh, you have to be calm and composed and you have to have empathy even if the patient is angry there has to be a reason for that anger you have to try to understand why the patient is angry try to pacify the patient in that case because you will be having those kind of cases as well where the patient is really angry try to understand patient's needs it is not about you okay as the ethics also say the same thing it is not really about you it is about the patient always try to understand what the patient wants when are you when you are non competent when you do not understand patient's desire for treatment today you are unfriendly or unhelpful dictates treatment so here in the uk you really cannot dictate okay you know that there is a there is a certain there are some ways uh, some i mean because you are a dentist you understand that there is a right treatment there is a wrong treatment but you still cannot dictate treatment you have to give them all the options that you have if the patient still asks you you know they would don't worry they will ask you if they are confused about something they will ask you doctor what do you think is the right treatment according to this what is the best treatment option for me that is when you answer but you do not dictate you cannot say that, that you know no i will not do the extraction i will have to do rct only so even in this case maybe rct is a better option you do not know that but the patient wants extraction try to understand what the patient needs right if they ask you what is the best best course of treatment that is when you'll be answering but then also you add a line in the end saying that it is but at the end of the day it is still your decision you try to understand the pros and cons of all the treatment options that i have given you and also read the leaflet and then you decide what works the best for you still you will not be dictating the treatment right okay now about communicating so you see they are they are judging you on these information first is information gathering so here they are seeing whether you are competent or incompetent then it is about patient interaction dentist patient interaction so this is about building rapport next is communication this is the most important obviously so here you explain the medical history in plain language communicates issues with extraction and anticoagulation check whatever we have spoken about okay all these things so you have to explain all this thing and after that you give a short term pain relief explain treatment very clearly without jargon this is these are the points that they are looking if you do not give it for example if there is 
no clarity in your thought process you using jargon jargon guys they they really i mean if you use a jargon they would really be deducting points for that you cannot use jargon even if you are giving the diagnosis always make sure that you say i'm really sorry for the fancy term i'm going to explain what it exactly means okay that that is that is completely all right because you have to also make sure that the examiner knows that you know the diagnosis you really cannot be going here and there not giving the right diagnosis that is not correct okay now poor explanation for refusing you are refusing to remove that is fine in both there are there is there is a specific way how you have to refuse poor explanation or no explanation about alternative pain relief treatment does not explain guidelines for anticoagulants so this is this is what we have decided already we have already discussed about this so we know what is communication this is all you have to talk and if you have all these points it is completely all right now the last is clinical management in clinical management what you are doing what if you decide to do the extraction today that is where you are incompetent because you have not done a proper because if you don't understand that if they are asking you to take a history for a patient who wants to get a tooth removed there has to be something which is going wrong they are not asking you to do an extraction like that there has to be something which is which will stop you from doing the extraction today okay so if you suggest inappropriate analgesia so the patient is taking what they are taking warfarin so what you cannot give so then what can you give exactly so always the safest option is paracetamol paracetamol is also uh, available over the counter so in that case you can say that you can take a paracetamol or you can say that you know i'll be prescribing one to you both are completely all right you have to defer treatment today you have to discuss the need for general practitioner or hospital to assess the inr maximum of 72 hours before extraction alternative treatment for pain relief recommends analgesia which does not interact with warfarin so this is what you have to do so here they'll be marking you here that this is this is a chart guys see this is what they, the examiner will be having and here they'll be grading you they'll be grading you how much you have done so for example if there is a point system like that okay there is one point for this one point for this so they'll be giving you point here if you have told about both the points they'll be giving you two here they'll be giving one point here one point here one point here one point here so here if you have answered all they'll be giving you four so something like that okay and based on the marks that they are so see you don't have to tell all the points it's really not possible to tell all the points then if you tell all the points you'll be getting outstanding but that's 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 not necessary if you have told all the points it's very good guys but you know because of time constraint you would realize that there are points that you would have to leave out so it can be either outstanding where you have told all the points then there is good there is satisfactory from here it is fail okay if it is unsatisfactory if it is poor if it is bad this is where they'll be failing you and these three will be passing so as you can see that even if you have got two points here three points here okay instead of four if you've got three points here instead of four if you have three points here doesn't mean that you will fail okay the important points have to be told yes there are certain points that you would be missing out because of time or because because everything you cannot think at the same time okay that's completely all right till here it is fine till satisfactory it's fine so do you have any doubts in this this is a very very simple oski okay it's a history taking theme as we discussed that there are four different types of themes and uh, this is a this is a first theme and this is a question this exact question had come in the last exam okay so yes whatever we are discussing in the oskis in the in the in those 84 oskis that we have we are going to discuss you are going to be seeing you you will see that there are 70 to 80% similarities in the oskis that you get in the exam also okay yes and those rest 20% is not something that you have not heard about it is something that you can answer or you can talk about because you you have cleared certain exams you have given you are a dentist already so you know everything what we are trying to do in those 84 oskis is to give you a perspective of how to talk what points to talk what points to miss what points not to miss okay so when you are 
practicing so that's why i always say that you know practicing is very very important i cannot focus on i cannot stress on this more but practice practicing is the only thing that you would have to do practice as much as possible you know make a study partner i would say make a study partner with one person because if you make study partners with many people then it is difficult to maintain that way have one study partner who's consistent who's practicing with you and try to record your um, practice sessions as well so that you can listen to it and when you are starting to practice you know right maybe today when you are practicing and when you will practice after one month you would notice that there is a lot of difference okay and what that difference will be because of the sessions and the practice that you are doing all these things okay so more than trying to read a lot of theory for this exam try to practice a lot all right so do you guys want to ask anything do you guys have any uh, sample one recording i did not get you dr sudha uh, what are you asking about recording as in no i am asking you to record yourself so for example for example um if you are practicing so just put a timer on okay and put a recorder on and record yourself so that you can hear it later you know and you would notice that okay i have missed this point i have missed that point and when you are because i told you that when you are starting with one oski practice it at least two to three times so in the third time you would realize that you have probably covered around 90% of the points so that is how you get better right yeah and in the beginning it's okay if you are seeing and uh, you know you seeing the notes and you are practicing that's okay but as the day progresses and you are repeating the same oskis then that that is when you make sure that you have the points in your head okay and you are trying to talk without seeing that is important because in the exam you would notice that if you are keeping it for the end that i will practice without seeing in the end that is when it is too late because then you are in the you have got the habit of seeing and talking okay so try to not see and talk after you have practiced it a couple of times okay uh, do um do you guys have any other uh, doubts so we are starting from saturday so you have still have some days left no no not one or two oskis uh, try to practice at least four oskis per day each oski at least two to three times okay um i did not get you per day you mean with me like in the class or you are meaning you are asking when you are practicing yourself or with your partners uh dr hanani so uh, what you can do is once you get your notes okay when you get your notes uh, what you do is uh, start reading so for example when we are having see the, so we are having before we used to have four classes um a week in a week so that is when it was difficult for everybody to keep a track of things and you know read before the next class but now that you have only you have classes only on saturdays and sundays so what i would suggest is uh, you read the topics that you read the notes that we'll be giving you before saturday so on saturday you know what we are discussing so that when you are practicing with me you are already you are not uh half prepared you know what to talk and stuff like that obviously there will be mistakes that is completely all right and we are there for that apart from that okay on your own dr sudha that i was telling you that you practice at least four oskis per day okay at least three three to four okay in the beginning maybe because you are practicing one oski for three to four times so i can understand but at least three to four oskis per day you have to practice and each oski at least two to three times yeah yeah no i completely understand so that's why i told you 3 to 4 is 3 is manageable so 3 into 2 to 3 is around 6 to 9 so 6 oskis so it will take around 1 to 1 and a half hours really manageable okay really manageable okay so do you have any other questions else we'll end the class today and we'll be starting on saturday please do read the topics that we are going to discuss so we are going to discuss 6 oskis per day okay so i'll be telling you what you would have to speak how you would have to talk we'll discuss little bit in the beginning and then we'll be uh, i'll be giving you the access and you'll be practicing with me uh my pleasure most welcome yes please uh and today just before you guys all log off i would want to um check your mics and your videos whether they are working because if you have got good internet it should not be a problem but with the last batch we had uh, we had little bit internet issues so we'll just try check it once okay 
uh dr hanani yes you'll be having all these classes because we are recording all these classes so all the classes will be available to you in your recorded classes session not only this class all the classes okay marking schedule no so the thing is that as i have told you uh, um what they say in the exam the examiner the lead examiner told us that there is no specific marking and it is they told they, exactly these were the words that the markings are very complicated but don't worry it is really fair so we do not have like a specific marking system because they do not give that okay they do not give that and they do not have it as well it is different for different oskis and they themselves are very confused about it but don't worry uh we would be able to tell you whether you're competent or incompetent based on the oskis right so so that should not be a problem okay there is no specific grade or anything like that it is not like that yeah so during when you're practicing with me i'll be telling you the points whatever you've missed and uh, so that when you're practicing at home again you do not miss out those points okay any other questions have i missed we have to ask about dental history and social history in history taking sessions in history taking themes you mean right so dental history and social history it is better to ask because in social history you are asking about smoking smoking is important because it might change your treatment planning dental history yes it is important but sometimes you would feel that it is it can can be irrelevant because they will either give you the dental history it is irrelevant or you know not applicable or something like that so you don't have to but in most of the cases it is better to ask dental history and social history as well okay all right okay so now uh, let us check your uh, mics and videos quickly dr madiha uh, is your mic working i'm giving you the access please put on it just to check whether it is working or not so that we don't have any problem in the sessions okay all right so i have given you the access if you can just turn on your mic and your video we can just check once quickly can you see me yes yes i can i can, can uh, so it's, yeah i can hear you it's perfect okay it's fine okay yeah okay. thank you thank you all right dr sadia can you put on your mic and your video just quickly so that we can check Hi, can you see me and hear me? I can definitely hear you, but not see you. Yes, I can see you now. Yes. Okay. Yes, perfect. All right. Next, Dr. Hanani, can you put on your mic? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, doctor. Yes. yes. All right. Yes. All right. Perfect. Thank you, uh, Dr. Parin. can you put on your mic and your video dr parin can you hear me uh, i can yeah. hear you it was not loud yeah thank you yes yeah yeah okay perfect thank you okay uh dr sudha can you put on your mic and your uh, video just like like how they did on top you would be seeing a uh, trying to see okay okay you'll be seeing a mic sign and a video sign on top of your thing can you see it now uh can others uh, help her little bit says reload page okay uh, okay then try to reload once there is a recording button if you can see on top of that if you just turn it on you'll be able to do that there is a green sign there is a green mic button there is a green video button and just next to the recording permission denied oh that shouldn't happen uh 
so try to reload the page once or do one thing just try to log off and come back sometimes maybe there's a connection issue on your side Okay, Dr. Sudha, no problem. So what we'll do is uh, Dr. Prerna will get in touch with you and uh, they would just try to sort out if there is a problem because we have some time left before Saturday. We really have uh, around three to four days. So because I have given you the access, it should not happen like that. Okay, so we'll we'll check it out uh, separately with you. Okay, don't worry. Are you able to hear me? Okay, so what we'll do is we will um, do a check with you separately in some time, maybe in the coming days or something like that. It shouldn't happen that this way because everybody could do it. No, maybe there is a problem. Uh, you logged off and came back. It's still happening. You know which button you are doing that just next to the recording button, there is a mic sign and there is a video sign. Okay. Yeah. So in that, what, how, how do you see the, is it like click on it? Yeah. Yeah. Do, do click on it. What does it tell you? Once says it reload page and permission denied. Okay, Dr. Sutta, don't worry. What we'll do is we'll uh, just do a quick check with you uh, in the next days and uh, we'll sort it out before Saturday. Okay, don't worry. Yeah, maybe if you just could log off and come back, maybe it would have worked. So we'll don't worry. We'll do it. We'll do it before the next class. Should not be a problem. Because I can see you going off and offline and online. So I think I thought that you logged off and came back okay okay guys so i think this is it so let's uh, we'll see you all on uh, saturday the classes between 10 to 1 it can go from 10 to 1 1 15 or something like that or sometimes we'll maybe finish in the starting classes it will take a bit more time because then we are discussing more okay and in the later classes because we have discussed same things and then you would realize that uh, there are less things for me to discuss and more to practice with you guys so then we'll be finishing on time okay don't worry yes 10 a.m uh, uk time yes yeah okay most welcome guys so um just uh, yeah bye i'm just shutting the class now okay thank you so much